to me, when it comes to athletes, there are those that I really like for different reasons, and then there are those athletes that I don't really like for a wide assortment of reasons. But one athlete that I've always liked is Damari Carroll. I was a fan of his back when he played at Missouri. I was happy when he was a first-round pick of the Memphis Grizzlies back in 2009. And I always viewed him as a guy that had got to the right team, the right organization, the right situation. I thought he was being slept on a bit as an NBA prospect, and I thought he would prove himself out to be a hard-nosed type of uh, wing player in the NBA that teams would really want to have as a valuable third or fourth option type of role player type of guy that you could potentially win an NBA championship with. Now, what has endeared me to Damari Carroll in, in a certain sense to a degree is that it didn't come easy to him and it didn't come right away. And for all intents and purposes, he was looking like the first several years of his career as a notable first round bust. Yeah, I mean, 27th overall pick, he didn't exactly have high expectations, but still a first-round NBA pick. And frankly, the first year of his few years of his career really didn't show much, really didn't do much. But the past couple of seasons, he gets to Atlanta, he gets in the right system, um, he gets an opportunity, and he makes the most of that opportunity in this past season. You're looking at a guy that averaged over 12.5 points per game, over five rebounds per game. Shot close to 49% from the field, almost 40% for three-point range. A very good modern NBA role-playing three in the terms of the sense that he's a guy that can shoot the three. He's an efficient player to a certain degree. He's a guy that can defend multiple positions out on the perimeter. And there's a lot to like about a guy, a 6'8 wing again, that defends and spaces the floor and can do a little bit of something at least with the ball in his hands. A guy I've always felt plays hard. He hustles, you know, has a toughness about him. So it was good to see a guy like Damari Carroll get that opportunity in Atlanta and make the most of it. Now, when it came to this year's NBA free agency period, he was one of those players that I was interested in seeing where he would ultimately go. Who would he ultimately sign with? How much money would he get? Now, a big part of me always thought that he would end up returning to Atlanta, maybe because they would offer him more money than anybody else. Maybe in part it was because Atlanta was the one that gave him the opportunity to really shine, the opportunity to potentially cash in in the way that he was going to this offseason, and that maybe he was going to look at the system fit and the success of Atlanta this past season and say, you know, I want to have some continuity and some security here and some familiarity here. That's important to me. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and stay with the Atlanta Hawks. Now, I knew there were options out there for him, and a team like Detroit may, might come uh, knocking down his door. But, you know, the funny thing is when it comes to these type of matters, there are always those certain deals that kind of catch you by surprise and blindside you a little bit. Because you never really saw it coming, and most of the media members, frankly, never reported it coming and never saw it coming either. So I have to say, when I saw that Damari Carroll had announced on Twitter that he was going to the Toronto Raptors, and I saw the reports that he was signing a four-year, $60 million deal with them, I was a bit taken aback by that. I was surprised. Yeah, I really was. I didn't really see that coming. And I'm still in shock a little bit about it. I'm, I'm curious as to why he ultimately didn't re-sign with Atlanta. Were they not willing to give him that number of years? Were they not willing to give him that much money? Did he see the writing on a wall with Atlanta and the fact that they weren't quite as good the second half of the season and that maybe they weren't a championship type of team and he thought the option was better in Toronto playing with guys like Lowry and DeRozan? I'm not really sure. Uh, but when I look at this deal, it's not a terrible deal for either side. I can see where it makes sense for both parties. But I do have some questions about this deal, both from the Toronto Raptors' standpoint and from Damari Carroll's standpoint. From the Raptors' point of view, is it really wise to commit $15 million a year to a player that, frankly, um, has only had two good seasons, a guy that's already in his late 20s? Doesn't that raise a little bit of a concern to you that he was a bit of a product of the system? And if you're not running the exact same system, you might be paying for past production and not necessarily future production. You know, frankly, also, is he really that much of an upgrade over a guy like a Terrence Ross? He's some upgrade, 
but is he so much of an upgrade over a guy like that that it necessitates giving a guy like Damari Carroll $15 million per season over the next four years? Now again, maybe this deal doesn't look as bad when the salary cap shoots up in another year, uh, but $15 million a year to give you slightly better than what Terrence Ross was giving you. I mean, and also from this standpoint, you're still talking about $15 million a year. That's a lot of money. Yeah, it's not max contract money, but that's big time money. You're paying the guy like a number three option, which is what he's going to be, obviously, in Toronto. Um, whereas opposed to when he was in Atlanta, frankly, he was the number five option. But does Damari Carroll really get you closer to that point? Does he really impact your organization that much where he helps you get over the hump? I mean, when you look at the Toronto Raptors, they had an embarrassing first round playoff exit at the hands of the Washington Wizards. Is a guy like Damari Carroll going to really make that much of a difference? Is he going to give you that much of the nit factor? Does he help get you to that next level in an Eastern Conference where you have to contend with teams like the Cleveland Cavaliers, like the Chicago Bulls, like the Washington Wizards? You know, I think it's a fair question. And if you're going to spend this much money on a three that you're looking to to defend and space the floor or give you more offense from the three position, why not pursue restricted free agents like Tobias Harris of the Orlando Magic and Chris Middleton of the Milwaukee Bucks? I understand both of them are restricted free agents, which means that both of those organizations could potentially match any offer to either of those guys. But at the same point in time, you're looking at guys like Tobias Harris and Chris Middleton. I think Middleton's 23, Tobias Harris is 22. These are guys that haven't even gotten to their mid-20s yet, let alone to their late 20s like a Damari Carroll. And frankly, at this point in time in their career, I don't see where there's that much of a difference between a Chris Middleton and Damari Carroll. So that means to me that Middleton has a chance to be better short-term and long-term. And Tobias Harris, to me, is already a superior player. If you could sit there and get one of those guys, like the Milwaukee Bucks just gave Middleton 70 over 5, why not go after one of those guys? Why not try to structure a contract in a way where it has some type of poison pill in the middle in terms of a ridiculously bad cap number, which you saw Daryl Morey in Houston do on contracts like with Jeremy Lin and Omar Rashid? Why not do something like that and get a player that's younger with more upside whose contract could really look better long term as opposed to a veteran like a Damari Carroll who's already pushing 30? Yeah. So I could see where he would be an upgrade. I'm not sure how much of an upgrade he was. And while I don't think the contract is putrid or atrocious, is about what I thought Damari Carroll would probably get on the open market. I'm just surprised that the Toronto Raptors went after him when, frankly, I thought there were younger options that could have either been cheaper or the same price that could have paid off more for you long term. Not saying, again, that they would have ended up with either of those two guys that I just mentioned, but you didn't even really take a swing at them. The best that I know of, you didn't even really put anything out there. Why not put any something out there? And then I also question this deal for Damari Carroll as well. Um, you know, frankly, and I've always been a fan of his, but he didn't matter until he got to Atlanta. The last two seasons he played well for Atlanta, you know, he's a two-hit wonder for one team. So while his skills, I think, translate to any system in the NBA, especially in the modern NBA, um, his system fit was best in Atlanta, and I thought they utilized him best in Atlanta, especially when you're talking about you had Jeff Teague, Paul Millsap, and Al Horford, and even you throw in, let's say, a Kyle Korver to space the floor. He doesn't have quite the same firepower around him in Toronto. You know, now there's going to be um, less opportunities in terms of openings is the best way I could put it. It's not going to be as easy for him to get his as opposed to what it was in Atlanta with the talent around him, with the system that they ran. You know, was this really the best decision for you in your game and your skills and your fit going forward? You know, and I question that. And I also question signing a deal like this with Toronto. This is sometimes, I think, where some of these athletes don't necessarily do their research. Some of them do, and that's part of the problem for a team like the Toronto Raptors being based out of Canada when it comes to the free agent market, when they have certain restrictions in terms of salary cap and luxury tax, let's say, in the NBA that you wouldn't necessarily have, at least from a salary cap standpoint, in Major League Baseball. You don't have the ability to 
go so far and above to overpay a guy to compensate that athlete for the fact that $60 million in Canada is not the same as in the U.S. The overall tax rates are higher. The cost of living is higher. So if Atlanta was sitting there and offering you four years and let's say 54 or 56 million long term, that contract actually would have paid you more than what this contract with the Toronto Raptors does. So financially, unless the Raptors offered them so much above and beyond what the Hawks were offering, and maybe they were only offering 11 or 12 million a year, or maybe they hadn't even made an offer yet. I didn't necessarily think this was the best financial decision for DeMar Carroll in terms of getting the most money into his pocket. You know, and then when I look at this deal again, while the Atlanta Hawks came a little bit more back to the pack and back to earth in reality, so to speak, the second half of the season, especially come playoff time, and in particular when they got swept by the Cavaliers in the Easter Conference Finals, does he really think the Toronto Raptors are closer to title contention than the Atlanta Hawks? Now, this is an Atlanta team that had four All-Stars this past year. You know, this is a Toronto Raptors team, if memory serves me correctly, didn't get, they get swept by the Washington Wizards in the first round of the playoffs? You know, Damari Carroll's a nice player, but I don't think he makes that much of an impact. I don't think he makes that much of a difference. And I most certainly don't know if the Raptors are any closer to title contention than the Hawks, especially playing in a conference where you do at least have the Cleveland Cavaliers with LeBron James where you have the Chicago Bulls with Derrick Rose and now Jimmy Butler back as well. You know, the Washington Wizards, that have a lot of continuity, and they have, you know, young stars like a John Wall especially. I mean, I don't really know. I don't want to sit there and totally poon the move because I don't think the money involved was terrible. I don't think the fit is terrible. I understand to a certain degree what a Toronto Raptors team would look at a Damari Carroll and envision him bringing to the table. I just thought there were maybe better use of their resources available. And from a Damari Carroll standpoint, I just don't know if it was wise for him to get out of that Atlanta system. And I don't know if this was the best move for him financially either. 